Reed Davis, welcome to Mind Body Peak Performance. Thank you, sir. Nick, it's great to be here with you. I've observed your work for a while now, and it's it's really remarkable. Good job. Thank you. Reed, let's start off today with the non-negotiables or unusual things you've done for your health and performance. You know, it's funny being in the health business and, and health coaching and, and biohacking and, and trying to help others. The rule number one is you have to walk the talk. So, you know, I follow my dad's advice. He, he long time ago, he taught me early to bed, early to rise, work like hell and advertise. <laughs> I take good care of myself. Um, I always try to be in good shape. I've, I do have some injuries, things that have added up as I'm nearing 70 years old right now. I'm going to bed on time, eating right, exercising, try to reduce stress as much as possible. I take my supplements, of course. You know, I am working on injuries, old injuries. So I'm, I'm looking into the latest and greatest on, I've had prolotherapy and PRP and uh, stem cells. I've had stem cells at least five times in both shoulders, my neck three times, my left knee, all from, uh, you know, surfing and playing football when I was younger. Uh, I work really hard outside in my landscaping, uh, which is my passion and hobby other than health. And um, wrestling, I did jujitsu for a lot of years, and it believe me, it adds up. Yeah, I play collision sports as well, American football and rugby, so I can attest to that. But you mentioned that you've gone through five different rounds of, I think it was stem cell therapy. Oh yeah, is it working? Yeah, I'm out of pain. Number one is mm. pain. So you know, I was sitting here at this desk for for years. You know, it just it just got so bad. Um, I, it's when I had to quit wrestling because uh, it was injury upon injury upon injury, and my neck's all straight straight. You know, it's just you know degenerative disc disease stuff like that. Again, it's just having what I call a well used body. You know. <laughs> yeah. It, and so, so, um, but yeah, I'm out of pain. Number one, number two is the uh, the range of motion and things like that have improved. The the last thing I did, which was the best thing I did, was use my own stem cells. Uh, f- they took them out of my hip bone. They they went right into the hip bone, into the marrow, pulled out what they could. When you're older, you don't have as many stem cells. Um, and then they spin it down. They freeze it. They spin it down some more, and then they inject it. And it's not cheap either. So you have to bite the bullet in more ways than one. But yeah, it's worth it. You know, in, in my case, in my in my case, you know, everyone's different. People are going to respond differently. Uh, there's all different ways the ligaments and tendons and bone can be affected. And um, not to mention the muscles and nerves and all the other parts. Uh, but yeah, so everyone's different. But I got good results finally after my third and fourth tries. Mm, good. So that'll actually be the topic of today's conversation. We will talking about, we'll be hopefully giving listeners the instruction manual to the human body that we should have gotten, but we never did. Can you help me understand what functional diagnostic nutrition is and what you're building over there? Yes, yeah, sure. So that's the name I gave the system I developed after I spent 10 years developing it. So, you know, everyone kind of knows my history. I was in environmental law and conservation, saving the planet, air, birds, water, trees, bees. And finally, in the late 90s, I turned my attention to people. What's what's it doing to people, the environment, including me, because I didn't want anything going south as I was getting older. I didn't want didn't want anything sneaking up on me. So I changed my path a little bit. I went to work in a clinic uh, to help people. And. it was just what a ride, you know, what a ride. Uh, 10 years I spent in that clinic learning to run functional lab work. I got at least five, six different certifications in everything from nutrition to personal training to some other modalities, myofascial therapy and stuff. So I really applied myself. I worked really, really hard for 10 years in that clinic. And uh, I had great mentorship, Nick, as you know, some of the top people in the back then it was just called alternative medicine. But no one ran the sheer volume of labs that I ran on their clients. 
And it's because I had the relationship with the doctors and the labs and, and th- that I could do that. And I was kept my nose really clean. I never once diagnosed or treated anything specific like a doctor would. I just used the lab work to identify healing opportunities, just what's really wrong, and then give the person things to do that would fix it on their own if there's time to fix it. You know, the body does heal itself if you do the right things and avoid the, all the wrong things and stuff like that. So, so to, uh, long story short, I. I was asked to teach. That was almost 10 years I'd been there. And everyone was saying, you should be teaching other practitioners. You're helping a lot of people. Think how many you could help if you would just deputize others with this amazing system you developed. I had to come up with the name and I figured, well, it's very functional. You know, we just only deal with the function of the body. We don't medically diagnose or anything. Um, It's diagnostic in nature. And because we use lab data, but not medical diagnosis. So more like diagnostic, like my mechanic, he runs diagnostics on my car. My computer consultant runs diagnostics on my computer. You run diagnostics on all kinds of things these days to figure out what's really wrong with it. So it's that kind of functional, how you're functioning, diagnostic in nature, not medical, which I know is confusing. But this is what I came up with. And then nutrition, because I was a nutritionist and I knew about nurturing, nurturing every cell, tissue, organ, system, nurturing your soul and your mind. And just so functional, diagnostic, nutrition, nurturing, it seemed to make sense at the time. And I called my first, the first teaching I ever did was in 2008. And um, it was a two day, two day workshop. I called it FDN. And that's what it became. Now we're kind of stuck with it. (laughs) You know, it won't go away because anyone that takes my course, it's now a certification course. It's it's not two days anymore. It's six to eight months of everything you want to know. Everything I learned in the uh, clinic for 10 years, working with people, the whole system of analysis of the data, the labs and the protocols all the epigenetic factors, everything a person needs to know to make themselves well. Yeah. What I like is that you guys have taken a bunch of different fields, such as basic blood work, hair mineral analysis, gut testing. You've taken herbalism and mitochondrial health and pretty much all the topics that someone should be steeped in to really understand the intricacies of the body and how they're working from the broadest picture lens possible and combine it into one system. Yeah, it's a step-by-step system with multiple components, obviously. And it sounds comprehensive because it is. It's very comprehensive. But the way I teach it, it's not complicated. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a difference between comprehension and and complicating things. I don't complicate things. I take a comprehensive approach and simplify it, make it very easy. And the reason is, Nick, I spent 10 years in the office as the patient educator. I had, you know, you're speaking to... Um, people that have no medical background. By the way, I had none when I started, and that's a good thing because I had to find another way. We we teach doctors now. We have to detrain them first and then train them. You know, so so I didn't need detraining. <laughs> I just got my own training and and learned to teach others. But but yeah, so we we um, again, like you said, it's very comprehensive. It's basically we test and, and there's an acronym for it. H-I-D-D-E-N spells hidden. Many many of these things are hidden and uh, some people aren't even looking for them. That's the real problem. But it's hormone, immune, digestion, detoxification, energy production, and nervous system balance. Mm -hmm. And so H-I-D-D-E-N. Now, there's other things. There's oxidative stress and, and stuff, but that's the core. So it's easy to remember. And it's simply some saliva, some urine, some blood, and some stool. And the blood actually is finger stick for some of it. So it's all testing that can be done at home by anybody. Mailed into the lab. Uh, We have labs that deal with our customers all over the world. We're in 50 different countries. Mm -hmm. So you can do this from anywhere. And anyone can do it. Again, as long as you can just get the kits from the lab and get them back to the lab with your samples in there, you're in good shape. There's there's one test that you have to get a blood draw for, but that's pretty easy to do in most places. So we do this very 
comprehensive, but again, I make it not uh, too um, complicated, you know, and and so it's a comprehensive in, intake, uh, data analysis, no medical diagnosis. Long before that, you get a diagnosis. There's the data. So the lab is not in the business of diagnosing. They're in the business of giving you numbers, you know, the, the specificity and the um, sensitivity of the test. And we can measure very tiny amounts of hormone in salivas, things like that. Uh, we can see things in the stool, in the urine, whatever. So long before there's a medical diagnosis, there's the data. Well, we look at it, at it in a way that doesn't, we don't want a medical diagnosis. That's actually narrowing down. That's not using most of the data you're getting. Mm -hmm. The minute that someone lays down a diagnosis, they look at all this data and they go, oh, you're hypothyroid or you're, you're this. You're, they're just forgetting most of the other data and specializing in on one little area. That whole system is not working. It's called reductionism. That the, the body's some little this part and that part. And oh, I'm a gastroenterologist. I've done everything I can for you. For that problem, you need to go see an endocrinologist. And they'll do everything they can for you within that scope. Again, they're just diagnosing little things that sometimes don't even address your, your overall health and well-being. They're just a part. Yeah. So we never do that. We get the data long before someone puts a diagnosis on it. Um, and, it, and it's just called healing opportunities. That's the expression. Want to write that down, healing opportunities. Oh, okay. So now you're using a different paradigm to, to coach someone up on health and wellness and how they can get there because you've identified those healing opportunities. Then, of course, you're going to have to apply what? Do we apply specific treatment to one thing? Absolutely not. That also is still in the medical realm. We apply the general principles of health building to every cell, tissue, organ, and system at once. Now, you're, you're a Czech practitioner. I'm pretty good buddies with Paul Czech, and I've uh, known him for many years. I was at his 60th, 50th birthday party, and I was just at his 60th birthday party last year. So, so we go back a ways. And he has a very holistic approach. You know, it's all it's the whole body, spirit, mind, and you can't really separate them if you want to get fully optimized and and as healthy as you can be healthy as your genetics and your environment will allow you to be. And it's work. Those um, building health building principles that will not treat anything specifically treat everything non-specifically and we've codified that too so on one side we look for the h-i-d-d-e-n hidden stressors and contributors to metabolic chaos all the things going on the the data and then we just recommend very individualized diet rest exercise stress reduction and supplementation that spells dress d-r-e-s-s -E -S. So you got hidden investigation the dress protocols and that's that's what we teach and obviously the business and you know how to be an entrepreneur and all that stuff but but i want to stick there with you could call it the clinical side you you manage a case that way it's just you know this is what's really going on these are the healing opportunities and these are the things you need to do over a time period so that your body can heal itself. Use that, coach up that innate intelligence. Coach it up, coach it up, coach it up. Well, you might coach down those, I call them contributors to metabolic chaos. And so that came from being a client educator, patient educator at the clinic for almost 10 years and telling them what to do at home. And I would tell them, look, it's not what you do in the office. Yeah, you're coming in regularly. You're, you're doing a good job of coming in. What are you doing at home? Because that's what really matters. And I just developed that dress for health success program, the diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, supplementation. And again, it sounds comprehensive because it is, but it's not complicated. That's what you do at home between visits. And that became the sort of ultimate epigenetic program, like, like, wow, I'm living myself out of the problems I lived myself into. That's pretty simple. So you have the hidden acronym that you use to identify your healing opportunities, and then you address them 
with dress, D R E S S. Yeah, exactly. Reed, I want to unpack the hidden acronym in a second. But before we do, you've already mentioned a couple ways that this is the case. But how would you contrast this with the traditional medical paradigm? Well, you know, they they fractionate, they diagnose and treat specifics, and that leaves people wondering, uh, what can I do? What else can I do? They don't want to. Let's say you go into a doctor with uh, complaints, and doctors use this. I call it the sounds like theory. <laughs> well, it sounds like thyroid, or it sounds like a parasite, or it sounds like whatever. <clears throat> and then, so they'll run that one test. God forbid they find it, you know, like you're, if you're tired and fatigued, you're a little bit overweight, can't seem to lose it. You have uh, constipation, maybe uh, numb or cold extremities, and you feel sad. That sounds like thyroid. So they'll, they'll uh, run a thyroid test and pat themselves on the back. Yep, I found your problem. It's thyroid. And you'll get a prescription for, to change the numbers on the paper. And then take that, come back in a couple of months, we'll retest you, we'll see how we're doing. When you come back in a couple of months, it's about how are those numbers doing? Not how are you doing? Yeah. Let's see how, and so the doctors focus, and this is just how they work. It's not their fault. They're not doing anything wrong. They're just doing what they're trained to do, which is get the numbers in the quote unquote normal area or range. And so the person might even feel a little better with a little more thyroid hormone or something. They're, most of them don't even use the right thyroid hormones, but um, that's what they do. Come back in three months, we'll see you know, how the numbers look. And maybe even what you went in there for, you're tired, you're fatigued, you're sad, you're, you're you know, stuff. You, you, you might have a couple, some abatement of some of those symptoms, but it's really not about that anymore in that doctor patient relationships is about the number. So we're, we don't operate that way. We don't think that way. We do all the medical intake, same thing, but we also do additional intake lifestyle. And we have this unique form. We call it the metabolic chaos scorecard. 20 years I've been developing that scorecard. Can you define metabolic chaos? The problems we suffer from today are metabolic problems you know it's it's you and your genetics and your metabolism everything is metabolic everything every process in your body and um could be called metabolism so sum total of all of that uh we simplify that that's that's a million different things so we start categorizing it there's two main areas of metabolism there's catabolism which is the breaking down the body and anabolism Mm -hmm. not cannibalism but animalism, which builds the body up. So there's, you have these, and you can measure that. You can measure your state of catabolic versus anabolic. Just start there. Okay, you're catabolic. Why? Stress, environment, things. So what's going on inside the body? Well, it's, I call it metabolic chaos because I've looked upstream so far in so many different cases and seen that, man, there's always multiple causal factors and they're having an effect upon each other, yeah. which is not measurable most of the time. Yeah. So you can't run a blood test and say, uh, oh, look, here, you know, like maybe there's nothing there. How many people do you know, maybe even yourself, have been to a doctor and been told nothing's wrong with you because their standard blood work isn't showing anything worth yeah. the crap. So, well, nothing's wrong with you. It must be in your head. Here's a chill pill. Um, go do some diet and exercise. Come back when you're really sick. You know, meanwhile, that person knows something's wrong. Mm-hmm. And it's again, it's you got to go upstream far enough to realize and I just did this thousands and thousands of times. Wow. Look at all these different healing opportunities. I don't use the term root cause anymore. Mm-hmm. There's always multiple root causes. They're having an effect upon each other. And those aren't measurable. So we do collect dots, you know, data points. But we don't try to treat one or give you something for each one. We connect the dots so that we understand the entire person and then give them the lifestyle things they need to do to reverse whatever damage has been done, if it's possible. It's not completely broken. Uh, And then uh, 
once you get to a, a stable point, really see how good can it get? How much energy and great sleep and sex life and athleticism and thinking and brain clarity and you know all the all the things that would would uh, dic- indicate a, a healthy and well person um, op- optimization, if you want. But um, so I don't know if I answered your question, but you asked about metabolic chaos. That's a term that I coined to just to replace root cause. No, the root cause is always metabolic chaos of some sort. And how do we categorize it? Hormone, immune, digestion, detoxification, energy production. There's something or all of them are out of balance Mm. and something's not working. Some metabolic process is is no longer efficient and and so on and so on. So uh, it's, I think it's the, the one concern we all have the chaos and um you can apply it to any any problem you have doesn't matter what your health concern is Mm. so what do we do we we hack or um sort out i just call it sorting out rather than biohacking because yeah that's someone else's term but but it's sorting out the metabolic chaos and um the lab work and the intake system is very helpful um, informing an impression about a person, but the lab work, oh man, it just defines those healing opportunities. You've told me previously in another conversation that we can go to our doctor and get an interpretation from them, but we're all entitled to multiple interpretations. And this can be another one of those that shows you what you can do first, potentially to improve and decrease some of that metabolic chaos. This is not medical advice. If you want medical advice, go to a doctor to get it. Yes. Go to someone licensed to give a diagnosis and, and treatment plan and medical opinion. You know, I might add a side note that the reason you need to be licensed because it's a very dangerous thing. That whole area, that whole paradigm of drugs and surgery kills people. <clears throat> you know, 250,000 people a year die from medical mistakes. So imagine if any nutritionist made any mistake, they'd be nailed to the cross. Do you need a license to do that? Because it's dangerous. You can really hurt people with it. So we give them a complete monopoly. They have it anyway, but it's we've woefully grant a total monopoly to diagnosis and treatment. So back to what we do, who owns the data? Whose data is that that the lab is figuring out? Should be ours. It's our, it is ours. It is ours. You, it's your data. You own it. Now, if you want a medical opinion and diagnosis, fine, go get one. Um, but what we want to do, we're pre-diagnosis, just looking at the data. By the way, I learned a lot of this from the lab techs. You, we call them lab rats sometimes. The lab techs are really smart people. They don't give a crap about diagnosing any one thing on there either. They care about the specific specificity and sensitivity of their lab work and are they really telling you what is the actual levels of bioavailable levels of hormones for instance Mm -hmm. you know not the blood you know bound up by you know free versus uh bound up hormone no bioavailable levels and that's how we tried it that we try to get um so we're into the just the data long before it's bastardized by diagnosis and treatment paradigm so your question was how are we different that's just one way you know the way we look at the data the other way is what we tell people to do we don't do drugs and surgery we're we're anti-drugs and surgery Mm -hmm. um most of that's just taking care of symptoms which is not a bad thing uh we're more into the long term what can the how can the body heal than just getting rid of the symptoms or managing the disease Mm-hmm. Give me an example really quick. God, I could give you so many. Lady comes into the office. She's in for neck and back pain, um, chiropractic and uh, acupuncture and massage and things. I'm a trained myofascial therapist, so I actually mm-hmm. got to work on her before the chiropractor would see her. And she came in and she, I just tell she's sad. It's about her 10th visit. She's doing well on her with her neck and stuff. Um, but, you know, she's sad. Hey, what's going on? Uh, it's this weight. I'm so frustrated by this extra weight. Well, what are we going to do about that? Well, there's nothing I could do about it, Reed. I'm on this medication for the hives. 
And it's just giving me these big purple sp spot, you know, all over my body um, if I get the hive. So I have to take this medication and it, it makes me fat. And before I could get the next words out of my mouth, she says, and you know, I was at the doctor the other day for a checkup and I told him how frustrated I was with the, with the weight. And he said, lady, according to her, he said, lady, you can be fat or you can have the hives take your pick. And she said, well, that's very depressing. He says, I'll be very happy to write you a prescription for antidepressants if you want. You know, so here's a classic, just treating symptoms and managing the dis-ease only. I said to her, well, why didn't you ever try to find out why you get the hives? Her head snapped around so hard, I thought she wouldn't need her chiropractic treatment that day. You know, she just... She just said, what, what? Like two years she'd been on that medication and gained 40 pounds. Wow. And, and, and oh, by the way, even on the medication, she couldn't take hot showers and she couldn't work out to a perspiration. Wow. Because she, even on the meds, we could die. So uh, I said, well, we could give you a couple test kits. You go home and, and you take, you know, send it into the lab with your specimens and we'll see what if we can figure something out. No guarantees, but let's see what we come up with. <laughs> we met with her to go over her results. I did. And within nine days of telling her what to avoid, some things she could be doing, she was phoning her doctor. This is, I have no parts of this, but she phoned her doctor and told him, um, hey, I'm not taking the medication anymore. I found out what causes my eyes. What a freaking concept, you know, and within another 13 days, I think she was losing weight and working out to a sweat and taking hot showers, mm. you know, we, and, and that's how it works. Sometimes that's what I mean by metabolic chaos yeah. and don't treat, you know, we're not diagnosing hives, you know, yeah. and, and we're certainly not prescribing any medication just to take care of the symptoms. Sure. Okay, so armed with the knowledge of HIDDEN, that acronym, once again, what are some of the things that people can do at home? Say I, I know that acronym now. What can I do today to start uncovering the causes of my metabolic chaos? The things you could do is, is pay attention, but hiring a, a, a health coach who really knows how to sort of break it down could be very important. You know, just someone that will give you an orientation on your all the epigenetic factors like that's your environment everything that you're eating drinking smelling exposed to emotional spiritual all, all the different factors um and you can look at that and you go oh wow a lot of room for improvement here what can i do health coaches uh, it, there's two different types there's institutional which are only there to help you form new habits and set goals and things. But there's, then there's the uh, independent, like, which is what I teach. I teach the independent coaches. Otherwise, just write down H-I-D-D-E-N, are my hormones balanced? Is my immune system overactive or underactive? Is my digestion working? Am I breaking down and absorbing nutrients properly? And you know, obviously there's other stuff in the digestive tract that you need to, you could concern yourself with. There's detoxification. You know, there's five main detoxifying organs and they all need to be working right. And then there's the um, energy production, mostly is around getting the right macronutrient ratios in your diet, the, the right fuel mixture. You'll produce energy, all other things like mitochondria being equal, um, the right chemistry, uh, for that, but you know, you need to fuel your cells really well. And then autonomic, the last one, nervous system is autonomic balance. People are overly sympathetic dominant these days a lot, and it creates a lot of metabolic chaos. You know, uh, there are a lot of other imbalance. So all, all these things are enhanced. H I D D E N are enhanced by um, poor autonomic balance. I learned that 23 years ago in a chiropractic office, you know, the sympathetic versus the parasympathetic. I have me really lucky and to be parasympathetic dominant. So you can do that. You can look at, consider those, at least those six things. Again, there's other stuff we look at, oxidative stress and what have you. Then look, are you eating the right diet? 
Are you going to bed on time and getting a good night's sleep? And there's other ways to rest. That's why I don't call it sleep. I call it diet and rest, yeah. which includes sleep. But there's other ways to rest. I rest during the day, sometimes five minutes, and I'm fully refreshed, you know, with mostly meditation. Diet, rest, exercise. You can't be healthy if you don't move your body. Mm -hmm. Paul Check calls it, what does he call it, doctor movement, right? So diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, and you probably want to start categorizing different types of stress, um, financial, marital, your know, relationship, you know, uh, uh, your kids, you know, your boss is yelling at you, you're under pressure, deadlines, stuff like that. God forbid you watch the news. That's, you know, you're going to be mentally and emotionally stressed by those things. Now, we also, you could look at like me, my main thing would be past trauma, you know, injuries from sports mm -hmm. and motorcycle riding. Yeah. And um, and so pain, pain is stressful. Chronic pain is horrible. And then finally, you have the chemical and biochemical stressors. Um, our environment's full of at least 80,000 chemicals we know have been dumped into the environment, just dumped and dumped and dumped and dumped, like barrelfuls per person every year, dumped into the environment. Not to mention your own personal you know, we produce toxins in our bodies that have to be filled. So I just named three major types of stress, mental, emotional, physical pain and trauma, and then chemical, biochemical. So you, you could start to say, well, um, DRESS, diet, rest, extra stress reduction. Now, supplements are a separate subject. Let's set that aside for a sec. Um, but that stress reduction, um, mental, emotional, okay, hate my boss, kids are little bastards. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love children. <laughs> um, you know, you get it. Financial, the mental, emotional, and what and things you then the the, the, the physical stuff. You got to go get it taken care of. Go see a check practitioner. Go see someone that can line you up in the gym and put you in front of a mirror and look at tilts and imbalances in your physical structure and body. These things are really important because they affect the nervous system. Matter of fact, it's one big big circle, you know, cycle. So you got your mental, emotional stressors, your physical trauma, injuries and pain, and you can go to a check practitioner and get all lined up, you know, chiropractic, um, acupuncture also is helpful and, and so on. And then for the chemical, hey, you know, do you work, are you a hairdresser? Um, man, we've said, seen so many of those, just, just the toxicity of the chemicals that they use it's ubiquitous in the in the industry um we've had airline pilots and steward you know stewards and and those uh flight attendants and people like that you know how much uh flame retardant they're exposed to on a regular basis everything on a plane is sprayed down with flame retardant you know i've got forbid crash burn yeah. you usually burn to death if the crash don't kill you <laughs> but but um you know, we had an airline pilot, Delta, a Delta guy, former military Delta pilot. He ended up actually taking our course because he decided he wanted to get out of that, get away from the diesel fuel, you know, the jet fuel and the flame retardants and other chemicals in his environment and just get into something where he could help others. And that's that's a theme, by the way. So so other than supplements, we covered D-R-E-S-S, -S, diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction. Supplements come last, and by the way, they're only 20% of the program. There's five elements. Each one represents 20% of the program. You got to do them all. Yeah. Again, it's it's comprehensive, but it's not complicated. When you're working with clients, when you or your coaches are working with clients, what are the most common assessments that come back suboptimal? The most common one is imbalance in the catabolic uh, anabolic, your body starts breaking down from any form of stress. All of those four, the body has the exact same reaction. What happens? Cortisol goes up, your stress hormone, adrenaline is flowing, by the way. All those things will break your body down, you know, to, to really just to make sugar to feed your brain and your body. You know, it, it's that. And what, what happens is you get deficient in the anabolic which is your DHEA and your testosterone and your sex hormones and things. And so you lose function there. And that is the most common overall. It's not a medical condition. 
it's just an, a very interesting, I would say that's number one. Now I could give you a hundred more imbalances, the things that we see on paper that are all, remember they're all just the points of light that where we connect the dots. If someone came to you and said, Reed, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't feel great. And I just want to go out and get five tests, five assessments to get a, the best snapshot possible of my overall health, which would you put in their lineup? Okay, I would do a saliva test for hormones and that catabolic anabolic balance and the circadian rhythm. We, we get a ton of information. By the way, I've had our lab customize that saliva test for us so that we also get a look into the immune system and digestion. So it's we're looking at HID already with one test. But it's not enough data. You get some points. If you just tried to treat those things, you probably – only get so far with a person. We want to go all the way with that person. We want to be the last person they need to see. Yeah. That's our theme, right? I'm, I'm when it's buck stops here. Yeah. Hey, no more cycle of trial and error. One practitioner to the next. So all these different goofy things and some good stuff. We would use that saliva test of the hormones, Sig A plus melatonin, mm -hmm. and, and um, I also do a, a urine test. We call it the metabolic wellness panel. Uh, the, the first one, by the way, is called the stress and hormone panel. So I would have everyone run five left stress and hormone panel, saliva, metabolic wellness panel, which we're again, we're customizing. We're adding a marker to this uh, in the next couple of months. But it looks at digestion, dysbiosis, liver function and clearance and oxidative stress all together. One simple at home, not expensive test. That's a lot of healing opportunities more points of you know data uh to connect later along with they have to connect with a person you know clinical correlation really good so i also would run a finger stick mucosal barrier assessment so just a few drops of blood on a blotter you mail it in it's not expensive it's easy to do from just about anywhere and we get um, zonulin uh diamine oxidase and histamine levels we're adding a, a marker to that too um real soon and it, we're going to get more comprehension on what's really going on in the gut inside. It affects digestion, immunity, and detoxification all at once. Because with antigen penetration, you're going to clog up your liver and other organs and things. So that's a saliva test, uh, dried urine. So you don't have to pee and send big pee samples. You know, it's it's easy. Um, dried blood spot, finger stick, and then a stool test. Also, not as much fun but easy to collect at home and send into the lab. And that would be um, a stool test. We're going to look at your microbiome, including friendly imbalances between friendly and unfriendly, what we call commensal type of things, and then uh, also pathogens. And there's even some functional markers on that for digestion. Are you breaking down your food right and, and, uh, and other things um, that, are, that are important to us? More data. Even is impossible uh, self treatment, you know, on specifics there. But again, that's where they people have a choice of going to a doctor or just self treating. Um, and lastly, the fifth test I would do is a food sensitivity, or what we actually call an oral intolerance test. We couldn't have a test done. You do have to go get a blood draw uh, for 170 different foods. No one eats that many foods. Yesterday, I was talking to a lady, and she said. Um, I said, have you run that test yet? She's in my freaking program and hasn't run that test yet. I'm like, WTF, you know, like, like why didn't you? She goes, oh, I already know what foods I'm sensitive to. Yeah. That's the wrong way to look at it. Yeah. Um, it gives you your list of what you're not sensitive to. Yeah. Like what foods are at least non-reactive in terms of the parameters of the lab. It's very sensitive tests, very specific tests, 170 foods. So you might look and go, oh, shit, I can't eat you know, this or that. That's not the point. Yes, yes, it's it's what you need to eliminate for a while, probably not forever, um, depending on what it is. But it's like all this whole list of foods that were non-reactive. So now you got some stuff to eat and it's your shopping list. You can go out in the world and say, I want this, 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 and this. Not, I don't want this and I don't want that. That's the sort of negative uh, approach or view of it. And so those are the five labs. Uh, again, the stress and hormone panel, metabolic wellness, 
uh, mucosal barrier assessment, stool test, uh, microbiome and pathogens, and then the oral intolerance testing. We, we have other, we have other uh, sort of online questionnaires and things that are really important to tie it all together with a person so we understand it's them. We're never going to treat the lab. We're gonna, it's going to be a person in a self-treatment um, health coaching model. Reed, if people are interested in becoming FDN practitioners, is that what you call them, coaches? Yes, sir. How do they Coach. go about learning more and becoming that beacon that actually sees other people as humans to work with rather than numbers and spreadsheets? It's fdntraining.com slash mbp, which is in honor of your podcast. Thank you for making that for us. And you mentioned that it's an eight month program and some of the modules, but what else comes with this training? Since 2008, I, I interviewed the first 2000 graduate personally. Now I have staff and we kind of incorporate it into the process, but you know what I asked them was, you know, what are you going to do from here? How can I support you moving forward? And what else could I have done to make the course better? Since 2008, you can imagine a lot of really good suggestions. You'll do five tests. You'll get mentor, personal mentoring on your own health, uh, at least three sessions. Then you'll turn around and practice that delivery of a, we call it results and recommendation session. With a mentor, you'll role play. You'll work on two people. You know, there are cases that we give you um, and you'll, you'll come up with the protocols. Yeah, here's all their stuff design a dress program for that person. And you go over that in a very friendly, nurturing environment uh, numerous times. There's numerous opportunities for that. There's some case studies and things. Again, a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with mentorship. And then uh, there's quizzes at the end of every video. There's a doozy of a written final exam. Here's what I'll say, Nick, is you can buy the course. You can't buy the certificate. You have to earn that. The time is now to get into this because the industry is blowing up. Um, you will. I had a guy ask me once, Nick. He goes, Reed, I'm thinking of taking your course. Tell me, blah blah blah. This and that. you know, I told him the whole thing, and he's like amazed. That's a lot. He goes, but will I be able to get any customers? I said, D where do you live? He goes, New Jersey. <laughs> I said, Nah, forget it. There's no sick people in New Jersey. <laughs> You'll never run out of customers, folks. You'll never run out of customers. It's just a matter of sorting them out, which I teach you how to do in the course. Sort them out is to A, can you help them? Mm -hmm. And B, do you want to help them? Would you like to work with that person? Because you're going to have your choice. You, you can build a, a waiting list uh, referral-based practice real quick if you follow my methodology. Mm -hmm. Great. Where can people learn more and connect with you on social media or your blog? Look at FDN Training. There's an Instagram. Look, it's just Functional Diagnostic Nutrition. There's a Facebook group. What three works or teachers have had the biggest influence on your life and career? Bill Timmons. Dr. Bill Timmons was the founder of Biohealth Laboratories. Um, he died and they eventually closed up shop. But man, did that guy, he was a naturopath. And he taught me, um, uh, along with Dr. David Singer, how to look at the body. This was chiropractic and naturopathy put together. So I, again, I worked in a clinic for 10 years. You, you learn a lot. And um, those two guys were really influential. Another one was Dr. William Bailey. You won't know any of these people. These, these aren't your favorite. I mean, I could say I followed Joe McCola for 20 years mm -hmm. and that might mean something to you, but no, the, the guys who really the, the adopted me and, and, and poured themselves into me um, uh, and allowed me to go out and make my own observations. They educated me enough to, well, go find out, Reed. God bless you. We, we hope that you um, do really well and help people. Um, so Dr. Singer, Dr. Timmons, Dr. Bailey, believe it or not, he was a rocket scientist. And then he became a DO because he had a personal health problem. Mm -hmm. He went, went back to school. So anyway, so um, he was really interesting. William Wolcott, who you might know, because and you should buy his book. It's called The Metabolic Typing Diet, yeah. William Wolcott. Um, 
It's the only way to handle the diet in my, in my view. It's realistic and it's yeah. for everybody yeah. because it's for nobody in particular. Exactly. Um, and well, that's more than three there. Obviously, Paul Check, you know, I love his holistic approach. And I also love the fire that he has in his belly. And he's a no bullshit guy. The idea of how he breaks down the, the anatomy of the physical body, I've never heard it explained better by anybody. Um, and currently, I'm reading um, everything written by um, Dr. David Perlmutter. Mm -hmm. uh, someone sent me a copy of his book called Drop Acid. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck, why haven't I ever read everything this guy wrote? Because yeah. it, it's he really thinks like I do. Mm. You know, um, even though he's a physician, he's way the hell out of the box long time ago, you know. And there's other really good doctors. Dr. Tom O'Brien, another guy I have to tell you, um, he, I got lots of pictures of me and him at book signings and things like that. Um, we've done lectures together. I'm going to be on his podcast next month. Mm. Um, Dr. Tom O'Brien, uh, he wrote, uh, you can fix your brain and other, other really good books. Um, he does his research as good or better than anyone else out there. Mm. And, um, you know, I know I'm leaving so many people out. I got books like this. So let me just show you real quick. Um, so, sorry for going off camera there. This book is 50 years old, Nutrition in Your Mind by George Watson. This is like half of metabolic typing. It, it's really a crazy book. These old buggers who are long gone, anything by Weston Price or Francis Pottens, or, and you know, I can go on and on with, with my background and the reading. Sounds like there's a lot there and I'll put all these in the show notes. So thank you for providing all those resources. And now we'll do a quick rapid fire round. Okay, I'm scared. What are the biggest myths around testing and diagnostics? Mm, the biggest myth around testing diagnostics is that there's one lab you should run. Mm. Like this is the lab. Everyone's got to run this. There's no one lab. And by the way, we're about 150 years away from where Star Trek had that little goofy thing that uh, Bones would go, you know, and, oh, here's what your problem is. By the way, his solution was very allopathic. It was always just a syringe of something <laughs> every time, right? So so it wasn't as far in the future as you think, except for that device. But there's no one lab. That's the biggest myth. Mm. What area of your own health and performance are you currently working on? You know, I mentioned the um, the stem cells and things. I'm not done yet. I'm going to get uh, my other knee done. Maybe the first one done again. Um, my neck, if if I have, you know, I, you know, I'm considering getting that redone. Um, my low back probably needs to be done. So I, I think my physical body, just maintaining uh, weight, body weight. What's one thing the FDN tribe does not know about you? Because I tell a lot of stories in the course, man. They love them, my stories. I once bought a map to a, a marijuana field in the middle of uh, Indiana. And a friend of mine drove there overnight and, and got there at like four in the morning and found it. It was buried in this cornfield in the middle of fucking nowhere, in the middle of Indiana. We found it. <laughs> and... Um, I could, you know, the rest is history, but um, I was, I actually stabbed myself in the shin bone with a sickle. We didn't know what we were doing. Wow. And um, yeah, I mean, that's, I hit myself so hard. It, I had to use two hands to force it out of the shin bone. And, but we just kept working we harvested and it wasn't worth the shit. We couldn't give it away. It was just made, it was hemp for making rope. <laughs> we didn't know that some bastard sold us this map, 500 bucks. That's in like 1971 wow. or two. You know, I was a teen. I'm an old guy. Been around. No one knows that except for just me and you. It's our secret. Okay, Nick? <laughs> yeah, no one else. Well, Reed, any final thoughts? How would you like to leave listeners today? You know, it's how you get up in the morning and look at life that matters. The cup is half full not half empty. And, and, you know, I could add in, like, don't have, a, I have no rear view mirror things I've said, but, but I think your point of view is that you have a purpose in life. And if you get up every day and work on it, just get up every day and do something that's in that direction. 
Um, one of the uh, leading gurus, I, I think he's still living, um, said that the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. Yeah. Well, then there's the second step and the third step and the fourth step. We're all on a stairway to health, if you want to use that paradigm. Mm. Well, look, some people have a lot more steps to go than others, but no one's at the top. I've yet to meet a perfectly healthy person. Yeah. So we're all on a journey. I could call it a stairway. A lot of people below you need a hand up, man. A lot of people need you to set a, a, um, a pattern for them, you know, some kind of example, especially kids today, you know, and we could go off on a lot of directions, but. Yeah. And guys, if you want to be that helping hand, FDN is a great place to check out and to educate yourself before you go off and hopefully help people up that same stairway. Thank you, sir. Well, Reed, thank you for your time today. It's been a pleasure chatting. For me as well. Thanks, bro. I'm Nick Urban here with Reed Davis signing out from mindbodypeak.com. Have a great week and be an outlier. I hope that this has been helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, subscribe and hit the thumbs up. I love knowing who's in the 1% committed to reaching their full potential. Comment 1% below so that I know who you are. For all the resources and links, meet me on my website at mindbodypeak.com. I appreciate you and look forward to connecting with you. As a reminder, information in this video is for information purposes only. Please.